suing Heavy Ball, so we'll be able to take a look at his prizes, have an idea of what's there, and we'll be able to immediately fish out that Radiant Charizard, a very good first turn find. Yeah, I think Pidgey is honestly going to probably be a better choice here for Alessandro. You really need to establish that Pidgeot engine, and yeah, having Radiant Charizard and the Heavy Ball on the prize cards, it's definitely not something you like, but this deck is centered around that quick search ability, and Alessandro will select that Pidgey, put it onto the bench, and the question now, is there anything else? And a very nice card for Alessandro on the first turn. Nest Ball, potentially to get this Rotom to just instant charge and draw a few more cards to really put himself in a spot to set this Pidgeot up for the following turn. And it will be even easier with that Forest Seal Stone coming down to the Rotom right now. Wow, an absolutely phenomenal there, first turn from Alessandro. And, you know, if Alessandro had, you know, a Buddy Buddy Poffin or maybe some way, you know, searching out uh, the Pidgey without using the Hisuian Heavy Ball, then maybe he could have gone for the Charizard. But in this instance, yeah, just guaranteeing the Pidgey off of the Hisuian Heavy Ball so you don't have to use any other search card for it. And uh, the Radiant Charizard coming into effect later, and maybe you could just work without it for now. I think this will be pretty much all Alessandro does at this point. Does still have some solid cards for next turn, and of course, that Forest Seal Stone. I think Alessandro, putting this down confidently, he has a solid idea that Isaiah is not playing something like Lost Vacuum in his deck to remove this Forest Seal Stone, so it will be safe on this Rotom unless it is knocked out. So then, for ending this turn with an instant charge, over to Isaiah's side, who starts off straight away with a course of experiments. Also a phenomenal start from his side, too. It looks like five cards. Not necessarily the toughest choice. And if he is a pretty easy throw into the lost zone, and from there, I think it just comes down to, do you value getting more Comfey into play? There is a copy of that Buddy Buddy Poffin. Or are you maybe okay getting rid of one of these Psychic Energy? Psychic Energy will be sent to the Lost Zone along with that Mana Fee. Yeah, but a bit now it starts to come in, right? We talked to right at the beginning about maybe uh, as I need to be a little bit aware of that Bufalon. A few more energies into the Lost Zone, that Bufalon can suddenly start to provide a lot of value for Aless Alessandro winning this game. Yeah, to note, these players did face off in Swiss, and I believe they both tied each other. So this matchup could go either way, of course. A little bit more time in top cut. And just as a general note, these control decks typically struggle a little bit more in the top cut environment because there cannot be draws. Whoever is ahead on prize cards after plus three turns in a set that both players are even on, and usually most of the time, Isaiah's going to be the one pulling out with an early lead in this matchup. Yeah, and the early leads are crucial, but at the same time, that's perhaps why Alessandro's uh, particular control list has seen so much success in the Swiss rounds, but also in these top-up matches. If you are a control deck that can take prizes, then suddenly you're not at the victim of the clock in those you know, last few turns of time, and you actually have a chance there. So Isaiah doing what he does every single game, organizing his deck, seeing what Pokemon are available, what energy cards are there, any other key resources to keep note of. We'll note that one of those Colrus's experiments are in the prize card, could be a piece that, of course, is always important for you to just see more cards, build that loss zone up, but it is not detrimental. And, of course, an extra Colrus at some point can be used thanks to that Bennett's ability to send itself to the loss zone and bring something from the discard pile, a supporter in this case, back into the hand. Yeah, and as I am very aware of the state of the game, did in fact uh, look at, just did account with the amount of energy in the deck too, so counted uh, all the energy, sorted them just to see exactly how many he had, and actually going to go for a double shop it off of this Buddy Buddy Poffin. Yeah, of course, playing that split line, you've got the uh, the Banet EX that for one Psychic Energy does item lock your opponent and deal 30 damage, as well as the Banet that I just explained helps you get some more consistency to your deck. And I think putting Double Shuppet down here is sort of a little bit of a warning sign to Alessandro saying, hey, listen, if you don't get Rare Candy Pidgeot next turn, I am just going to start item locking you and start putting you in a position where your deck is really going to struggle. Yeah, it's a strategy that Isaiah wanted to employ against Control before but couldn't, but, you know, if he can pull it off here, then he's going to put himself in a very, very great spot to win because, of course, uh, this uh, deck is very reliant on that Pidgeot engine to search out the right disruption card every single turn. But it looks like a Flask that can get rid of a Chorus experiment there and then going to bench a Giratina V afterwards and then... Perhaps if there's a Jet Energy in hand, maybe we could see it a bit seeking. And yep, indeed, exactly like Jet Energy whooshes that Giratina V into the active. And then I imagine we're going to see an Abyss seeking for four more cards. Yeah, you never want to send Colrus to the Lost Zone. It's one of the consistency cards, one of the cards that just allows you to keep digging through your deck and building up large hands to put together these combo turns of Mirage Gate, Gusting cards, all of those pieces. We'll see what these four cards are. And Nest Ball is probably okay to go to the Lost Zone. And I think the choice now for Isaiah, is he okay getting rid of Stadium cards? Alessandro's really not playing anything too disruptive. Actually, is just playing the Artisan in terms of Stadium. So I think a good choice here from Isaiah. Nothing too detrimental. Now up to five cards in the Lost Zone as Alessandro starts his turn off. 
Yeah, and Alexander starting off there with that, drawing a defiance ban for turn. Not going to be able to make the most use of that, especially given that the Radiant Charizard isn't the prizes, but just going to start off with a Pokegear instead. Wants to find something to work with just to sort of really kick things off. So let's see what this Pokegear finds. Seven cards are going to want to find some kind of disruption supporter, I imagine. There is a boss's orders there. Yeah, boss, not bad, I'm sure. Maybe looking for an Arvin to find that rare candy to get Pidgeot EX into play and have that quick search engine. Now, Isaiah, earlier on stream, really went aggressive after Pidgeot EX as soon as it was established in the Swiss round that he played. Just tried to build up Garatina V-Star, evolve it. Freya, do you think he's going to go for a similar strategy, even though Alessandro's deck is built a little bit differently than the one he played against earlier on on stream? I imagine Isaiah is going to you know, go for it and see if it works until it's proven otherwise. It's, you know, he's, Isaiah is a very good player. I think you're sort of adapting on the fly. Sure, Alessandro's list is a little bit different, but he's going to figure out what's best based on that. He's going to play through these games and adapt as he goes. And I think that's the way you kind of have to play against control. And no supporter card there off of that Ooh. second Pokegear. This may have to be for Sealstone that once per game V-Star power being used by Alessandro because he understands how important That's it is boy. to establish Pidgeot EX. Yeah, very interesting. After the first poke here, I actually found the Bros Hands. Oh, we've got a oh, third, third one. one. Hold on. <laughs> and uh, I mean, these are key resources you want to have later, but you really are more than happy to play these Poke Gear if it's resulting in impactful supporter cards that will get you to Pidgeot. Come on, this is a third gear. Are we really not going to see something like an Arvin here? And no, there's no supporter card to assist. Just an Eerie. And now Alessandro in a position where he's got to decide how does he want to navigate through the rest of this turn? Is it going to be that Forest Seal Stone use? But the biggest issue is there is no Pidgeot or Rare Candy. So even with that Forest Seal Stone, there is an inability to establish Pidgeot EX and has to bench a second Pidgey because of the fear of that solo Pidgey being knocked out on the following turn. Yeah, it was forced in that situation there. And not finding the Arvin off of the Pokegear, really, really unfortunate for Alessandro. Finding the Eerie is still pretty good, though. So, you know, you can bench the second, the, the second Pidgey with the Nest Ball here. Maybe just go for that Eerie, see what your opponent has. Maybe uh, try and pluck a few key resources. I think it's still a pretty decent backup play to make. Better than doing nothing for sure. We will see the Eerie come down. What resources are discarding for Isaiah? Just handing the hand over, and there is just a switch. It's oh. not the worst resource. Like of course, time. you would really like to see things like Mirage Gates hit the discard pile, but Alessandro, he'll take the switch. It's not incredible, but it's still okay. Yeah, it's, it's one but less uh, switching out that uh, Asai is going to have access to later on. There is, of course, the jet energy already ready in hand, so we'll be able to switch next turn regardless, but it, again, it's better than nothing. So just going to end on an instant charge, and now it's going to be back over to Asai. So, Giratina V still in the active spot. Alessandro, though, with both of these Pidgey, there isn't any way for something like a Lost Mine to come down. Not quite enough cards there. I mean, that would be devastating in this spot, knocking out these Pidgey. So, uh, even though it's not happening this turn, or hold on, wait, the pieces actually might be here. The Banette can send itself to the Lost Zone, and Colrus plus one Flower Selecting will build Isaiah up to 10 cards in the Lost Zone if he can find a Switching card, Sableye, and a Psychic Energy off of all of these draw cards. And this is Banette really showing your strength here. Not just, of course, able to get back a supporter with it, but with that, of course, it's just two extra cards in the Lost Zone. So you can just say, burst here, attending the Lost Zone out of nowhere. I was proven wrong, Banette. Add, acting as almost like a lost vacuum in this case, just to boost these loss zone numbers up, and not only boosting the numbers up, but providing consistency, bringing this Colrus back. And now the question is, what are the cards in this hand? There's just a lot of Pokemon and energy. Isaiah's going to be, looks like, forced to bench this Radiant Greninja to draw a few more cards. Really needs to find something like Switches, Mirage Gates, but it's just more energy oh, cards, no. and the more you draw into, the harder it is to use those gates later on, because... Got to have the energy in the deck if you want to accelerate them. And all of a sudden, we were saying about how you know that uh, Eerie hitting the switch wasn't that impactful. Actually, make the difference maker. If you know, that if um, as I had access to that, I think he would be able to pull off the loss by this turn. But now he has to just commit to finding a Mirage Gate off of this uh, loss, off of this uh, flower selecting. Does he find it? And he does find the Mirage <gasps> Gate. It looks like I believe that that's the Mirage Gate in hand. <sighs> but I think the question here for Isaiah is: Is there a psychic energy available? Is that an option remaining in the deck. Now there's one in the Lost Zone, two in the hand, and I believe there is five in this deck. We'll have to see what these two cards look I, like. I think it might be Psychic Energy plus Mirage Gate, you know, I think that's why they're debating over. Oh no, it's a Nest Ball, okay. Let's see what this card is. 
Oh no, it's no, a jet, jet energy. energy. Okay, that makes sense. I, mean, I think <sighs> quite the piece there. Yeah, I think if it was Mirage Gate, I think you'd probably just grab it instantly. I think the fact that he was agonizing over it for so long, I think he's probably he did the evaluation earlier, right? He had to look at how many energies were in his deck, so he would know straight away if the Mirage Gate play was viable or not. But either way, end up being a moot point because he was not able to find it. Unfortunate break for both of our players in these early turns. Isaiah not finding any of those Mirage Gate after Alessandro whiffed three Poke Gear 3.0 to not be able to establish the Pidgeot EX. And this will open up another door here for Alessandro. We're potentially just going to see another Abyss Seeking come out this turn. And that is the choice for Isaiah. Precious time granted for Alessandro in this match. Yeah, Alessandro breathing a sigh of relief there knows he was in a real potential spot of bother, but Isaiah just a little bit short of putting together the devastating double knockout on the Pidgeys. So instead, yeah, just forced to Abyss Seeking. And maybe now he's going to find that Mirage Gate. No, not even. It's just a bunch of energy. But Mirage Gate is hiding out, and this is also an awkward choice. He's going to have to put that Forest Seal Stone in the prize, or rather in the Lost Zone. Piece that can always be used as the V-Star power instead of Star Requiem, just to get a piece out that was needed. And instantly, we're going to see the Star Alchemy be used on the Rotom V Star Power for Alessandro. And this makes me think that there's at least one of those pieces in the hand. With that Pidgeot grabbed, we will see the rare candy evolve it. Now, quick search is online for Alessandro. Yeah, that'd be a gorgeous, uh, shiny pitch up the X from the uh, Paldean Fates, uh, but uh, able to now one search for, first for any card in the deck once per turn. And this is where Alessandro is really going to get going. He's going to find the perfect card every turn to have an answer to anything that Isaiah can do. And uh, Isaiah is really, really reeling about not being able to find that Lost Mind play last turn now. So we'll have to see what attacks of choice Alessandro wants to start to put together. He can't just sit here and use Quick Search over and over again. Isaiah's got pretty aggressive cards. Something like Prime Catcher plus Gate plus Giratina V-Star means that we could see this Pidgeot get knocked out. And Alessandro is going to want to make sure that that does not happen. There is some things like the Luxray V that can, of course, use the Fang Snipe attack to maybe get rid of a Trainer card in the hand for Isaiah. But I think Alessandro sort of has an idea that there may not be something just yet, but it is going to be that play. Luxray coming down, and this is the line that Alessandro thinks he needs to take. And to be honest, I agree with this route here. Yeah, I do as well. I think it's very clever because it serves multiple purposes, right? This Luxray, with that Fang Slipe attack, you can you know, get rid of a trainer from your opponent's hand, but it's an attack that you can constantly use to gain hand information. You just slowly pick away your opponent's hand, you can have a better idea of what your opponent can do, and you can really start to whistle away as I counter plays from this. And especially with that Penny as well, to just you know, pick up the active and then and send up the Luxray, the double turbo is ready to go, and never, we're going to see that Fang Slipe. So here we go. Luxray V making its debut really on this stream the weekend. Gonna see Fang Snipe just does 10 damage because of that double turbo energy, but that's not its purpose. What does he find? And finds the Prime Catcher in oh. Isaiah's hand. That is a big hit off this Fang Snipe. Didn't even notice that uh, Isaiah got that off of the uh, Abyss Seeking, but yeah, I was trying to find it now, and wow, what a devastating Fang Snipe there. And even has great cards, something like Super Rod is in the hand, so Alessandro, with how things stand, may be more than happy to just use that Fang Snipe again on following turns. And this is exactly why Alessandro went for this here. Isaiah's hand is so big at this point. You know, you saw your opponent go through so many cards with the, the Chorus Experiment, with the Flash, I think, with the Abyss Seeking. Chances are you're going to hit something good, and Alessandro absolutely struck gold, or struck prime in this instance. <laughs> Striking pink, I like that for sure. We will see Prime Catcher be fang sniped away as Isaiah starts things off with a concealed cards. There is a Poke Gear 3.0 that will be the play. So looking at the top seven cards of the deck, do we see a supporter card? There's a Chorus still prized. Is there any supporter? There is a Roxanne, but that's really Ooh. not going to have any effect right now. No, uh, of course, uh, Alessandro not likely to take a bunch of prizes until later on in the game. So, yeah, not likely that Isaiah is going to be able to make use of that anytime soon. But going to grab it anyway. May as well thin one card out of the deck. You know, it's not something that's going to be useful for now. So you may as well thin it out of the deck while you can. And maybe you can find something a bit more useful off of these next few flower selectings and uh, digs that you're going to do. There is a jet energy in hand as well as a super rod. This is tough, though. I think that Isaiah very much understands that if the super rod doesn't get played, Alessandro is just going to discard it. So we'll see the super rod. Get not maximum use, there's only two energy being put back in, but it's better than getting no use at all. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it was basically the second uh, choice after the Prime Catcher, right? So Isaiah recognizing that and going to play it straight away whilst he still can. There's still like a lot of um, resources in Isaiah's hand, though. It, I'm really wondering where he's going to go for it. Is it going to be another Abyss Seeking? I think we're just slowly building up. Who needs Mirage Gate when you can just attach every turn and build up to that uh, either Lost Impact or Shred Attack? 
I think the biggest concern here, and Isaiah just passing it, and this is a really smart play yes. from Isaiah because if he finds a bunch of good cards, they're just going to get discarded if they are trainer cards from that Fang Snipe. I think you, you must have been reading my mind because I was thinking the exact same thing there, and uh, that's exactly how it's played out. So very heads up there play from Isaiah, not wanting to find any more of those resources just for them to get discarded anyway. So now it's back to Alessandro. Does it go for that quick search straight away? And again, going to try and see what he can put together. The Fang Snipe was really great last turn. He could go for it again to maybe just see you know, what else Isaiah has access to. But maybe Alessandro wants to go for something else. Maybe he wants to you know, change his pace a little bit. And it looks like uh, he's going to be finding the oven off of that quick search. Yeah, no need to play something like the Penny. And this can grab some more of those powerful trainer cars out of the deck. We could also see something like the Hero's Cape. That would put this Luxray V out of range to be knocked out by a lost impact, and that will be the choice, along with an Hisuian Heavy Ball. Oh, so, so Alessandro placed two of those in his list. I didn't even, didn't even notice that before. <laughs> yeah, there are two Hisuian wow, Heavy okay. Ball. Lots of these lists, now that there's no Peonia in the format, they need ways to get multiple basic Pokemon out of the prize cards, and that second Hisuian Heavy Ball coming in clutch here for Alessandro, getting that Radiant Charizard out of the prize cards. Yeah, we were talking about how he might struggle to get it, but now, of course, it makes a lot of sense. If you knew you had access to two and it, they, you know, one of them wasn't prized, then it makes sense you prioritize the Pidgey first because then you can always just grab the second one later to actually attack with the Radiant Charizard when you need it. Just making sure he understands what else is prized. Radiant Charizard will come to the hand. And maybe if you're Isaiah, you're sweating a little bit. Yeah. Alessandro has put together... Couple cool combos, lots of the people, and myself included, would still give Isaiah the edge in this matchup, but that's only if you do find the pieces when you need them. There was a big opportunity open there with Alessandro not finding Burr Candy Pidgeot after using those Poke Gear, but it seems like Isaiah's window of being able to punish that has passed at this point. We'll yeah. see more Pokemon come down, and now the Cape actually going onto the Pidgeot EX instead. Yeah, so that, that this uh, pitcher up to a mighty 380 HP really puts uh, out of range of a lost impact. He's going to force Isaiah, if he wants to KO it, to use a Star Requiem. Uh, but the, yeah, 380 HP, that is absolute, that's, that's a ridiculous number, Valve. I'm sorry. It's, it's, uh, Hero's Cape just enables uh, these absurd numbers to be reached now. And uh, yeah, how do you deal with something, a uh, support Pokemon that has just that much? And another great trainer card for Isaiah hitting the discard pile, that Temple of Sinnoh, allowing you to shut off some energy cards. Yeah, and especially, and, uh, especially given that, you know, Mist Energy would be the way that Alessandro can protect the Pidgeot from a, um, you know, a Star Requiem from the Giratina V-Star. Getting that Temple of Sinnoh means that you've, you've countered Isaiah's counter to the Mist Energy. Yes, yeah, so that's a big hit here for Alessandro. That means with this information, he can play this game completely differently, not really fear that Star Requiem on certain Pokemon like Pidgeot. It feels like we're almost playing Protect the President, it feels like, with <laughs> Pidgeot EX, doing everything we can to make sure Pidgeot is as safe and sound as possible, and it's for good reason, because having Quick Search every turn is so important. Yeah, protect the president. Uh, I think uh, Pitchoff does very much have the, those uh, sort of regal, regal vibes, I think. So, uh, absolutely the leader in this deck. So, yeah, I want to protect it at all costs. We do see the Mirage Gate coming down. Two more energy onto the bench, Giratina V. Finally, him comes down the Giratina V stuff from Isaiah. So, I guess maybe just going to go for the KO on this Luxray. Finally, finding that Mirage Gate. And there is that psychic energy attached for the turn. So, lost impact, 280 damage. Isaiah finally primed to at least take some prize cards. From here, how does Alessandro respond to Garatina V-Star being powered up, set up? It's now got more than enough cards in the Lost Zone to fuel that Star Requiem attack. And if you're Isaiah, you're really looking to invest that potentially in these upcoming turns on knocking out this Pidgeot EX. Yeah, President Pidgeot comes into the active. Another card drawn for Alessandro. Not going to be able to quite mount a counterattack yet, of course, as I has only taken two prizes, so you, you're not really able to put together a uh, multiple energy uh, so onto the Radiant Charizard to get attacking with it now, but uh, something that Alessandro is going to bear in mind, and instead, yeah, going to go for the quick search, and uh, there's so many different attacking options that uh, uh, Alessandro could make use of here, but is, is that going to find that missed energy, going to attach it to the Pidgeot, and yeah, now this Pidgeot is so safe from this Giratina. Pidgeot is not necessarily powered up, but he's protected up at this yes. point. He's got the Mist Energy. He's now 380 HP thanks to that Hero's Cape A-Spec tool card, giving whatever Pokemon it's attached to 100 more HP. And Alessandro could potentially also play a Supporter card this turn. We haven't seen that come down yet. As Alessandro is just trying to develop a board where his most important resources are just being protected. And uh, it looks like we'll just see uh, cards be shuffled up. This Rotom does come into the active spot, actually. So okay. we'll see the Pidgeot be retreated, and it looks
looks like we may actually just see an instant charge to end the turn off and give Alessandro a little bit more in terms of cards. And this is very clever because I think what Alessandro is doing here is forcing Isaiah to find a gusting option because, you know, yeah, you can pick up the Pidgey with the Penny. That's going to be really good as well. If you force Isaiah to KO this uh, Rotom here, suddenly this Radiant Charizard can attack for just one energy and that's the point where you can put a Defiance Band on it and you can just sweep through Isaiah's fields and that's how you take control of the game from there. Yeah, I'm sure Isaiah will not be falling for this no. trap <laughs> at all. But that's why it's so good is because Alessandro can just bring it up. It's necess not necessarily a liability when it sort of plays into the strategy. That Pidgeot, really not going to be a target on Isaiah's side. You're going to need to invest two Gusting cards to knock it out. And again, with that Prime Catcher being discarded by the Fang Snipe, that is an important resource in this matchup that Isaiah is down. And Alessandro has been getting the hits he needs to put himself in a good spot in this first game. And this is exactly why Alessandro went for it. I mean, you know, Isaiah can uh, not want to fall into the trap as much as he wants, but maybe if he doesn't have a choice, you know, maybe if Alessandro recognizes that the way he's constructed his board, the way he's picked off Isaiah's resources, Isaiah is forced to kill this Rotom. So, you know, you can know, be aware that's not the best thing to do, but he might not have any choice. So now both Giratina V evolved into Giratina V Star. And I think the choice for Isaiah. Do you use something like Star Requiem on the Rotom? I mean, now that the Pidgeot has this Mist Energy, you're really not going to be using Star Requiem on it now that your Temple of Sinnoh, a key resource, was gone. We talked with Isaiah a little bit. Chip interviewed him earlier on, and I mean, Isaiah was saying, every time I have Temple of Sinnoh, I really just don't want to have it in hand. I'm trying not to draw it because of circumstances like this, and that's sort of the unfortunate part. Sometimes with this Lost Zone Giratina deck, if your opponent's not playing aggressively, you can't shuffle these cards back in, and if your opponent's not playing Iono, you can't put them to the bottom of the deck either. Yep, you only want it on the exact turn where you use the Star Requiem to KO something or end, uh, with, through the Mist Energy, but instead, yeah, it looks like Isaiah is actually going to go for the Star Requiem, force the KO on the Rotom, and now this plays right into Alessandro's hands. That Charles can now attack for just one Fire Energy, and I'm fairly sure Alessandro has all the pieces to put together to do it. It just needs either that Defiance Band or that basic Fire Energy, and the Defiance Band is already in the hand. Combustion Blast, thanks to that Excited Heart ability, attacking for just a single Fire Energy, and we'll be doing perfect math since Alessandro is behind on prize cards. 280 damage into this Garatina V-Star. The question now for Isaiah, yes, you can lost impact and potentially knock out this Radiant Charizard, but how do you get through this Pidgeot? And remember, every time you lose lost impact, you are sending more and more resources away to the lost zone in combination with Fang Snipe, you can sometimes just lose too much to be able to streamline attackers when Alessandro can use things like Radiant Charizard to essentially knock Pokemon out. Less so to take prize cards, but more so to just remove these energies and resources off the board. Yeah, and let's not forget, sure, Isaiah can KO this Radiant Charizard back uh, very easily, but Alessandro has the means to put together another Radiant Charizard attack with a Defiance Band very easily right at the start of the game. We saw him take that Brotan's back up. He can use that to put the Defiance Band back into the deck, and that way he can just keep chaining these uh, 280 Combustion Blasts. That's very true. That's very true indeed. I think we are just going to see the Combustion Blast. Alessandro has made it so that the only two Pokemon in play are this Radiant Charizard and that Pidgeot. What seemed sort of like a not necessarily super impactful support of that Penny to pick the Pidgey up is actually super important in this case because it means that if Isaiah knocks this out, Alessandro can potentially even just swing with this Pidgeot EX, deal some damage, and there it is, Alessandro finally taking prize cards, Combustion Blast, obliterating this Charizard, excuse me, obliterating this Giratina <laughs> V-Star Charizard, so far, the MVP here for Alessandro, more so with that Pidgeot EX. Yeah, got to be feeling happy about that. And now Isaiah has got to think very, very carefully about how he wants to approach this next. You do need to kill this Charizard. You cannot just leave it there because that is going to put you in very bad stead. But at the same time, if you do leave it in the active, maybe you think, hold on, you know, it might be a little bit tricky to switch it out. Of course, that Combustion Blast, you can't attack the, term, the turn after you use it. Or rather, you can't use Combustion Blast again on the next turn. So it would force Alessandro to find a switching out to do it. You see Isaiah just thinking in his head, how do I navigate through this spot? How can I deal with potentially losing another Giratina V-Star down the line? And that is sort of one of the things you have to acknowledge of if this Giratina V-Star takes a knockout, can Alessandro put together this Radiant Charizard again within two turns? Even two turns is, I think, more than okay because this Pidgeot EX can essentially soak up a hit. It is a 380 HP, two prize Pokemon that is protected from something like Sableye. Of course, Star Requiem's already been used, but that's really the effective Mist Energy. 
forced Isaiah to use that powerful V-Star power onto a different Pokemon. Yeah, it's important to remember, placing damage counters is not damage, it's the effect of an attack. So Mist Energy does indeed protect from Lost Mine. We saw that come up uh, earlier on as well. So very, very important to note. And uh, it, it, you can see Isaiah's really struggling here. He kind of recognizes he's not left with uh, many great options. Has that Mirage Gate though, so maybe... Oh, hold on a second. <sighs> okay. Not quite the direction I thought. I was thinking maybe, as I could be thinking, do I want to try maybe an attack with my Benet EX or go for a Poltergeist? That would be a way to KO the Pidgeot. You could do a lot of damage with that. The problem is that Benet is still in the deck, so with the pieces Isaiah have, do you ever commit to that play? If you miss, you're really not doing much at that point. You just kind of give this Charizard a turn to maybe be penning back into the hand and then reset to use Combustion Blast either that turn or following turn, thanks to Pidgeot being a great pivoter, having zero retreat. Yeah, and it's tricky as well because if you can't, you know, get it powered up in one turn you, and, and then you evolve the Banette, so in waiting, Alessandra could very easily just, you know, use something to bring up the Banette EX and then KO it before it can uh, do its job. So it's a play you have to put together on the turn you think you can do it to win by KOing the Pidgeot EX. So Jet Energy will move this Giratina V-Star into the active and that lost impact attack will knock out the Charizard. Even more energy sent to the lost zone. Isaiah is so close to victory, but still is one prize card away just because you're this close doesn't mean things are over. And Alessandro does find a basic fire energy off of the prize cards with having Ultra Ball and the fire in hand. If we see that Roseanne's backup, Alessandro could have all of the pieces needed to knock out this Garatina V-Star, but it could be at the risk of, of course, Bennett EX being a potential response option. Yeah, that's so, so tough. I mean... It's, it, you would take the Giratina down, and that would be great, of course. I think you have to evaluate this play based on how many energy you think there's left. So, so you know, we see there's a, a Psychic here, a Grass here, another Psychic, a couple more than there. If you have a look through the discard pile, see how many energy is left, and then I think you can base that, base your decision on that and whether you think you can get away with it or not. Yeah, it's weird. It's, I guess, in a sense, if you just leave this Pidgeot in play, as he has put in a situation where he either has to fill this last bench slot up with a energy efficient attacker like Cramorant, which attacks for zero energy to maybe poke the Pidgeot out, and then that means 110 damage plus 280 damage could be better, or you have to make another play where you just kind of sit here and wait for your opponent to do something or build up that Banet over time, and it's just going to be a Poke Gear 3.0 for Iono, and this is where Iono is a great supporter card potentially later on, and there it is. We are just going to see Roseanne's backup be played, importantly shuffling in that Charizard and the Defiance Band. Alessandro getting multiple uses out of these item cards. More importantly, the tool cards shuffled back into the deck. Yeah, Roseanne's backup, a phenomenal card for this exact reason, and actually, oh, it looks like, interesting enough, going to be the double turbo of the quick search and putting it onto the Pidgeot, so I think we're going to see the Pidgeot do an attack here. Yeah, if Alessandro has a counter catcher in hand, could go after that Shuppet and remove that option of a powerful Poltergeist attack to take the final prize, and that honestly could be the best potential option here for Alessandro. Even poking this is not terrible necessarily. You do set it up for a three-hit knockout. It just, you gotta really wonder at this point, is it worth the investment? But with that counter catcher in hand, I feel like that's gotta be your best play. Yeah, because I think Alessandro recognizes at this point that Shuppet is the only thing that could become a threat that can actually knock out something on my board. So if you just deal with the Shuppet before I could become a Benet EX, then you deny the Poltergeist option because you have so many cards in hand. You know that Isaiah knows that all in all likelihood, if the, if the Benet EX comes out, then you can, then uh, Isaiah can take an easy KO with Poltergeist. Yeah, so we'll see this Radiant Charizard put into the hand reason to bench it. Don't give Isaiah that way to win the game out with something like Boss's Orders plus an energy card. Now, Alessandro will just play some more cards out of the hand. We'll see a Hisuian Heavy Ball hit the board, so that will let Alessandro just thin it out of the hand, shuffle those prizes. There are no basic Pokemon to be grabbed out. And let's see if that Counter Catcher gets played, or if we're just going to see something like this Pidgeot attack into the Giratina. I think we're just going to see 110 damage into Garatina, so maybe just trying to soften it up a little bit. Alessandro maybe making a call here that Isaiah doesn't necessarily have the resources to knock out, or rather use Lost Impact multiple times, but with this opportunity, with this option, I think he's just kind of thinking to himself, how many trainer cards are in this hand? So Poltergeist does 60 damage for every trainer card, would need to have six trainers in the hand to take the knockout onto this Pidgeot. Oh, no, it would be, it would be oh, seven, five, right? Correct. At 60 times. So there's, oh, yeah, seven because yeah. it's 380 HP. Yeah. Jeez, that is. <laughs> but I think Alessandro has that, though. That's the thing. I mean, I, I mean let's do account for now. See, one, two, 
Three, four. I, th I think there's seven trainers in Alessandro's hand. I think. Yeah, uh, it's sort of a weird situation because Alessandro played an Ultra Ball last turn. So yes. if Alessandro was trying to play around this play, he could have played this Ultra Ball to discard some of those trainer cards from the hand. Playing an Ultra Ball and not discarding trainers is sort of a telltale sign maybe to Isaiah that Alessandro does not have enough trainers in the hand to take a knockout or be knocked out with Poltergeist. And if you invest all those resources and you're knocked out in return, what happens in this situation? Oh, hold on. That's a bigger problem here. There's no energy left in this IS deck. There's no way to Mirage Gate. You can't power up the Poltergeist. It costs two to attack with it. There is a Super Rod, so... Oh, there is. Okay. We'll see if there is enough energy in the discard pile. We did see concealed cards be used a few times. So Mess Ball will not grab anything, so it's important. Let's take a look and see how many energy are in the discard pile. There oh, it is, is yeah. exactly two. Okay. So it looks like Isaiah at this position may be all in on this Banette. It's always tough, though, because... I can't, I have to think back here, we'll sort of reflect on this play, because if you ever take out this Banette, this Garatina really cannot lost impact. You've got to maybe put together a play where a Cramorant comes in, but that's a switching card being burned. So, I mean, there's going to be a lot to think about this matchup. There's so many different ways that things could play out, and we will actually see that one copy of that Ultra Ball grab the Banette EX, and now Alessandro may be thinking, Okay, this is a real threat. Did I play well around, well enough around this, or is this Isaiah's best play? Has the Colrus's experiment? So we'll look at all but just two cards left in the deck. Do we see the Super Rod? Yeah, he's right there. And the Super Rod is there. I think with how Isaiah is playing this out, it may just be a gamble. Pretty much banking on the fact that your opponent has a bunch of those trainer cards in their hand. I mean, more than almost more than half of their deck is trainer cards. I mean, they are playing so many trainer cards in this deck. You've got to assume with as large of a hand size that Alessandro has, there is seven trainer cards in that hand for Poltergeist to take the knockout onto Pidgeot. And you have to wonder, I mean, you, you'd imagine at this point that the players are going to be familiar with each other's list, but maybe was Alessandro not thinking about the Benetti X when he was doing his plays last turn? That's what I've got to wonder. And, and again, makes me think, if you played that counter catcher to knock the Shuppet out, how does Isaiah respond? You could always just play the Super Rod, but then you've got to revenge the Shuppet, and then something like the Quick Surge could grab another way to bring it up. And I mean, that's sort of what I'm thinking of in this head, especially if the Shuppet is the MVP. Looks like we'll just see the Buddy Buddy Poffin and the Garatina V Star sent to the Lost Zone. And the question now there is a Jet Energy in the hand as well as potentially the Mirage Gate plus the Super Rod. I'm not sure. If the Mirage Gate is in hand, that could be a piece that, that that's true. Isaiah is looking for. So that's true. it looks like he has those pieces, and this is thinking time for Isaiah. How does he want to put together these last attacks? We're going to see the Banette come into play, get evolved. How will things play out? Things are super tense here in this first game. Yeah, and to, to us, it might look obvious, right? It might look at this as like, you know, oh, why hasn't Isaiah just like slammed down this jet energy, gone for the Super Rod, gone for the Mirage Gate, and gone for it? But there's so many calculations going on in his head. He's got to be thinking, there's so many mind games going on here, right? As, literally, all Isaiah is trying to uh, work out is, has Alessandro bluffed me, or, you know, is there enough trainers in Alessandro's hand for me to go for this play and win? <clears throat> it's very, very, very tough. So tough. I mean, for Alessandro, there's so many things to play around. And this feels like it may be the last trick up Isaiah's sleeve to close the game out. Yes, Everlasting Darkness is great, but what's better than that is just dealing a ton of burst damage. And there it is. The Super Rod will put back in three energies to the deck, potentially at least the two needed to power up this Banet. And that Mirage Gate is going to power it up. And Isaiah, I'm sure thinking in my head, Please just have enough trainer cards for me to get this knockout with Poltergeist. Yeah, it's 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 so so tough, but I think it absolutely is the correct move to go for here. And actually, quite wisely, going to put back two grass instead of uh, you know two psychic. Thinking I only need one psychic to power up this banette, but I think I value the grass uh, more for later on. So there is going to be it's going to be the Mirage Gate psychic and grass on on this banette. Are there enough trainers in Alexander's hand for Isaiah to get the KO with Poltergeist on this Pidgeot EX and take game one? It's going to come down to this reveal here. How many trainer cards? Does Alessandro have? Isaiah's just going to play everything out, bank himself off of this Banet, and say, look, this is what I believe. Let's take a look at the hand. How many trainer cards are there? One, One two, two, three, four, four five, six, six, seven. That's enough to knock out this Pidgeot. Just enough trainer cards. And I have to wonder in that situation if Alessandro had maybe discarded one more of those trainer cards yeah. off Ultra Ball, he would have been safe from that Poltergeist. He's got to be reeling from that for sure. Yeah, either that, even just like playing the counter catcher, right? That would have been one less trainer in hand and it would have killed the Shuppet anyway and denied that play entirely. Asaya, it just with the insane read there, able to take the KO on the Pidgeot and take game one. Wow. Wow. 
just enough. Even with that hero's cape, Pidgeot goes down to Banette. And Inclusion Isaiah has talked a lot about how useful it's been over this weekend, how it helps with a lot of this deck's problems. And maybe in one of the more unconventional ways, I'm sure Isaiah wasn't thinking, oh, of course, in top four of an IC, you know, I might need to just hit for a you know, little <laughs> calm 400 plus damage to knock out a Pidgeot. But that's where the best players shine in situations that are uncommon, situations that don't happen every time in practice. Isaiah going up 1-0 and has to be feeling great with how long that game went, over 35 minutes. And we're going into game two with 40 minutes on the clock and Isaiah, the aggressor, up 1-0. Can I give a shout out there to Alessandro's poker face? I mean, <laughs> imagine the nerves, right? You're sitting there thinking, is he going to go for it? Is he not? And just, you know, trying to make your opponent think, well, maybe I don't want to go for this. But as I have seen through and just nerves of steel to go for that poltergeist and take the win, just absolutely incredible. And uh, let's go back and look at the rest of the game. Yeah, of course, early on, Isaiah using Abyss Seeking, that was no stranger. But Alessandro just unable to find any of those Arvin off of the Poke Gear 3.0. Isaiah had a big chance to use that Sableye Lost Mine to find enough, or rather to get Sableye powered up, getting those 10 cards in the Lost Zone thanks to the Banet throwing itself in there. And because it was not capitalized on, Alessandro was given a big chance in this game, but just having that one extra trainer card meant that that Poltergeist attack at the end was able to knock out that powered up, big, beefy bird, that Pidgeot EX. 300 HP, 380 HP is a lot. It is absurd. We did say this earlier. It is not enough for a Bonnet EX to, to you know, so, or rather to survive a Bonnet EX's poltergeist attack doing seven trainers. That, that's, what is it? 420 damage. A lot, a lot. I like Alessandro sort of looking at the purple as the, the yeah. lost zone popped up here. <laughs> you got all the stage, all the lights on you. There's a lot going on, but Isaiah had just enough resources to go for this Bennett play. He understood it was his best play, and it paid off towards the end. Isaiah up 1-0 in this first game. Let's look at the prize cards now. Double Colrus's experiment and oh. double Mirage Gate oh, in the prize cards. Brutal. Not what you want to see for Isaiah. Nothing too detrimental for Alessandro, so I think on his side, he'll be more than okay. Yeah, and it uh, looks like we are going to be kicking off already in this uh, game two. Alessandro will be going first. Starts off with that gorgeous uh, Chi Yu. It's uh, honestly one of my favorite illustration rare cards so far. I love that Chi Yu so much. And, uh, Rotom, you know I'm a bigger fan of Rotom myself, so a little bit <laughs> biased there as well. <laughs> we'll use that instant charge ability just to draw a few cards, and Isaiah going second does start this Giratina. So at minimum, we'll be able to get some cards in the Lost Zone. We can see a Poke Gear 3.0 played as well. Isaiah definitely looking for one of those Colrus's experiment, but with two hiding out in the prize cards, there's pretty low odds to find one, and Ooh. that is the case here. Isaiah just having a boss's orders, but sometimes it's not even worth grabbing the boss's no. orders. You can thin it out, but having it in the hand is information for your opponent. It's going to be a more than juicy card to eventually be discarded with Fang Snipe. Yeah, it was different with the Roxanne, right? Because that one, if it did get discarded, didn't really care as much, but the boss's orders, that could be a very valuable resource, so better to keep it in the deck. It's a lot safer in there, and instead, uh, Isaiah um, has a a few more options to work with in hand. It's not great, but it's not terrible either. You do have at least an energy, so yeah, you can just go for an Abyssiki straight away. I do believe there's another Giratina in hand, so you could put that down if you wanted to. And uh, what's this other card that is Isaiah debating? Oh, it was indeed the Giratina. Oh, no, it's just Shop It. Okay. I think Shop It coming down is fine. You've got multiple uses for it to evolve into either or. And you want to just make sure you play around some weird win conditions or things that could potentially happen for Alessandro. Who knows? You could maybe get Ionode at one point and then never find a basic Pokemon for a few turns. So at least Isaiah is just getting that Pokemon down and now looking at the top four cards with a Beast Seeking. We'll see two hit the Lost Zone. It is that Roxanne and Psychic Energy as Alessandro will finally get things back over to him. Nest Ball is a great way to start things off. I'm sure we'll start to see more of these Pidgey come into play, and eventually look to get evolved into Pidgeot EX. Yeah, he's going to want to set up his uh, control strategy, just like he did in game one, to an almost game-winning effect, uh, as I just uh, able to KO the Pidgeot in the end, of course. But uh, important to get that Pidgeot out as soon as possible. And does have the Arvin ready to go in hand as well. So uh, Alessandro's going to have a very good turn two here. He even has rare candy Pidgeot already in oh, the hand. Oh, wow, so yeah. Could see Alessandro just use this Arvin to get a few more of these basic Pokemon into play. Something like the Pidgey number two. That could be a solid option to bench or even just another Pokemon in place. So we'll see what the choice here is for Alessandro. 
at the moment. I mean, if there's something like a fire energy, we could see, uh, you know, Chi Yu get in there with some jealousy singe action, maybe try yeah. and discard some key resources for Isaiah, but I think instant charge will definitely be a better way to end the turn. It's just not really worth the risk. Yeah, usually, uh, you know, that, you want to go for that at the end of the game, really, maybe to just discard the last two cards of the deck to win the game, or when you're discarding cards at a point where your opponent can't really do anything, so you just kind of accelerate your win condition. Building early on, I mean, maybe you get lucky and hit a few resources, but it's not really what you want to be doing most of the time early in the early game of this control archetype. So we'll see what Alessandro can do besides this. I think it's just in an excellent spot with his hand. Rare Candy Pidgeot, that's what you want on the first couple of turns of the game. And we'll just see Instant Charge, draw these couple of cards. Alessandro in a more than prime position the following turn. And we'll see what Isaiah has. There is a Prime Catcher top deck. You really don't want to have that this no. early on in the hand because of Fang Snipe potentially oh, putting on Thank more you. ways to discard these trainer cards. And with how this hand looks, honestly, for Isaiah, we oh. more than likely could just see an attachment to this active and another Abyss Seeking to try and find some of these Colrus and really just having two of those prized hurting him a lot here. Yeah, when you've got two of them prizes, so much less likely to find them off the Poke Gears, exactly like we saw turn one there. As I am not really able to find it, but um, going to try and find a way to dig into it another way. So yeah, just a bit seeking to, to try and get more in the loss zone, try and get to that you know, critical mass of seven so you can Mirage Gate or even ten so you can go for a big loss mine. But yeah, as I am to start a lot slower here. We do see four cards here off of this. Abyss Seeking and not the toughest choice. Giratina Countercatcher cards more than happy to be sent away to the loss zone. So Arvin is the top deck for turn already, starting with that rare candy. Pidgeot doesn't have to use anything like the Forest Seal Stone yet, but it will still come down. There is the Nest Ball, so I think it might be time to have yep. Luxray come down, and this is going to hurt for Isaiah. That Prime Catcher is going to most likely be the choice here for Alessandro. Two games in a that. row. Yeah, two <laughs> games in a row hitting Prime Catcher off of the first Hank Snipe for Luxray. This is going to be huge value for Alessandro. Yeah, now, and it is important to note this. Uh, Chiyu does have a tree cost of one, so Alessandro needs a way to get it out of the active as well as, uh, you know, double turbo to attack with this Luxray. Don't quite know if he has it yet, but maybe with a combination of Quick Search and Arvin can find it? Yeah, that is the potential. There's maybe something like a way to pivot out. There isn't really anything. Well, there is actually a switch card in Okay. Hand. So this Arvin could just grab one of those switch cards. We're actually just going to see the airy get played. Oh. And this is going to get a lot of value because there are two excellent item cards in the hand. That Super Rod and the Prime Catcher, both hitting the discard pile. Great value off of that supporter. A devastating airy there. And uh, who needs to discard something with Fangslide, but you can discard it the O2 with a supporter card instead and then do a different attack. Wow. <laughs> So now Alessandro also has some hand knowledge at this point, knows that there is another good trainer card in this hand, that being that Temple of Sinnoh. And we're actually just going to see the fire energy come on okay. to you. So here we go. We're seeing some Jealousy Singe action potentially to discard some cards. This is where some of the randomness of the Pokemon TCG comes into play. Let's see if that is the choice for Alessandro, or if he just wants to use other attacks. Jealousy Singe, top two cards. What is it? Jet Energy and Colrus. Oh my Those goodness. are two very good discards. The Colrus could be brought back with something like the Banette, but there is no Banette so far. And those are two more resources gone for Isaiah in the second game. That's uh, two amazingly lucky hits off of that uh, Jealousy Singe. Definitely going to be feeling pretty happy about that. And Isaiah uh, going to be reeling a little bit. Does uh, have a Buddy Poffin. He's going to look through the deck and actually finally be able to count through those resources to see what he has left. Yeah, crazy that this is his first time searching the deck. Has not found any of those Nest Ball or Buddy Buddy Poffin until now. So we'll see what's still available. We'll note that those Colrus's Experiment and Mirage Gate are in the prize cards, and that is probably the next resource that Isaiah is hoping Alessandro cannot discard or disrupt because two of those are in the prize cards. If Alessandro can find a way to get rid of the one or two remaining, any extra bot time could allow him to create a strategy where he starts knocking out the only attacking threats on Isaiah's board. And if he gets to that point, Alessandro's going to be in a very, very good, uh, good stead to win. But as it stands right now, uh, yeah, as I had not got a whole amount, to, a good amount to work with, it just it, not really any serious attacking threats, right? I mean, I guess maybe if you get a Giratina V-Star, another energy, you can maybe KO this Chiyu. I guess that'll be a good way to start things off. But even so, then you just play into Alessandro's Radiant Charizard. Looks like we'll see the Buddy Buddy Poffin grab at least one of these Comfey, and Isaiah's going to do what he did the first game, just make sure his bench is managed as, mo as well as possible. Some of these Pokemon could be sticking around for a long time, and it looks like it's just going to be the double Shuppet strategy again, valuing that Banette to just provide some consistency, build the Lost Zone up, as well as the Banette EX 
to use its item blocking attack, and more importantly, that poltergeist attack. We saw both Bennett's uh, used to great effect in game one, so no surprise that Azai is going for this again. Does have a Nespo as well for good measure, so maybe we'll be able to find another Comfe, or maybe another Giratina V, or even that Radiant Good Ninja to try and draw a few more cards, maybe find his way into uh, either his you know, last remaining Corsus experiment, or could even find that uh, Bennett's um, and get the support back from the discard pile with that ability. Radiant Good Ninja, an excellent support Pokemon just to draw cards. It's been used in this deck sometimes with Water Energy to use Moonlight Shuriken, but not this time. Isaiah pivoting to a little bit of a different build, a little bit more of an unconventional build here with Radiant Greninja and a bunch of these support Pokemon. We do see the Banette drawn into, but there is really nothing else going on to this hand, and it's just going to be another Abyss Seeking. So wow. we'll see four more cards looked at, two more sent to the Lost Zone, but... Even with this Abyss Seeking, Isaiah has yet to unlock the Lost Zone's potential with something like the Mirage Gate or Star Requiem and Lost Mine. And now with that Fire Energy ready to go on the Chi Yu, you can, of course, if you're Alessandro, retreat into the Luxury and go for that Fang Slipe next turn. Kind of makes sense why, why Alessandro went for the Jealousy Singe last turn. If you need to, an energy to retreat anyway, might as well just go for the attack one turn, see if you hit anything good, which, of course, he very much did. And now this turn, you can go for the Luxury, go for the Fang Slipe and see what you can hit. And also a tough loss zone there for Isaiah. I believe drew into Jet, Psychic, Psychic, and Switch. So had to get rid of another Psychic Energy and a pivoting card. We saw how important that could have been for Isaiah if he had that earlier on in the previous games. Alessandro will at least remember those cards that he saw in the hand. Of course, some factors are changing, right? Your opponent just used Abyss Seeking, so maybe that's a little bit more incentive to use something like that Luxray's Fang Snipe. Still also remembering that that Temple of Sinnoh is still in hand, and I think that could be more than enough value. We could also see the second Pidgeot EX come into play. Oh, now, yes. the way things work out is you can't use more than one Quick Search ability per turn. No. But it's still another Pokemon that if for some reason one Pidgeot falls to an aggressive Lost Impact play, you've still got that support engine online and running. We do see that a hero escape being found there as well. We did see how the, the 380 HP Pidgeot did survive for a long time last game, unfortunately just falling right at the end to the huge uh, Poltergeist, but still a great option to have the Hero's Cape. And yeah, going to go for the quick search now. It's going to be interesting to see what Alessandro decides to commit the Hero's Cape to in this game. Double Pidgeot EX, and that quick search ability will find the double Turbo Energy, and now Fang Snipe is an option for Alessandro. GU has just a one retreat cost, so it can swim out of the active spot. Luxray can come up and discard a trainer card Isaiah has in his hand. Yeah, absolutely phenomenal. In, in game one, we saw it used to great effect. Uh, getting rid of that Prime Catcher. Prime Catcher's really dealt with in this game. Don't have to worry about sniping that again. But again, you're going to get that hand knowledge. You're going to get rid of another trainer card in the hand. All Asai has been doing is been building up the hand with uh, you know, the trainers uh, with and with these Abyss Seeking. So chances are Alessandro is going to hit something good here. It's just thinking through if there's anything else to do at this point. And I mean, there is still that V-Star power that has not been used yet. So that's another piece to think about is... We are just going to actually see an okay. instant charge use. So Alessandro's just going to put some energy on this Luxray. And, and this is sort of a little bit of a threat here that he's established. If Isaiah ever wants to continue to play supporter cards like Horses Experiment, use more of those Abyss Seeking, the larger the hand becomes, the more prone it is to getting some of those powerful resources discarded with Fang Snipe. Yeah, they're very uh, heads, up, heads up call there. Um, uh, so, oh, hold on. We see the jet energy going onto the active. We do see the Giratina V-Star. And looks like Isaiah will be able to take the first two prizes of the game and just deal with this Chi Yu. Yeah, taking prizes is good. Isaiah wants to put himself in a spot where he's going to start to line up these knockouts. Of course, Star Requiem can take two prize cards. Pending, there's not something like Mist Energy in play. Lost Impact looking to take two prize cards on this Chi Yu. And we're just going to see both these yeah. Pokemon evolved. Lost Impact knocking out Chi Yu EX and Isaiah. Taking the first two prizes and does get one of those courses experiment from the prizes. Yeah, very important to find. Now, the thing that's going well for Isaiah here is that, uh, yeah, he hasn't been able to set up there that well. He has been able to, he has had to do a seeking over and over again. But there are a lot of two prizes on Alessandro's side of the field. You do not need to go through that many attacks in order to you know, take the win here. And Alessandro can't protect everything. He has to kind of decide what is the most important to protect. And maybe he kind of needs to find some pennies here. So maybe take some of these... Uh, um, you know, liabilities off the field because there are there's a very easy prize map for, on the, the field for Isaiah to make use of right now. And there is that Bufa launch found off of the prize cards. This is an attack we haven't seen so far this set. That lost headbutt attack dealing 60 damage and lost zoning an energy card onto one of your opponent's Pokemon. Then there already are a few energy cards in the lost zone, a few psychic energy. Could we potentially see a way to play something like the lost 
headbutt to maybe get into a Pokemon, and we're actually just going to see the Forest Seal Stone be used to find Ultra Ball, and I think we're going to see a super cool play here. This makes a lot of sense of why Alessandro put this double turbo on the Luxray. He is playing one of my favorite supporter cards in this deck, and it is that Thornton. Oh, of course, Thornton. So using that, you can get the Bufalon into the discard pile, Thornton to swap it over the, the Luxray into the Bufalon, and then you can go ahead and attack with it. Wow. I think that's what Alessandro is queuing up on this turn. If there's another energy card, that Luxray can transform into Bufalant. And since there has not been an energy card attached yet for turn, and there, there it is. is the first time this weekend. Thornton coming into play, swapping these basic Pokemon out, and Lost Headbutt is going to put in some serious disruptive work. Yeah, on a missed energy as well for good measure, just to protect it from a Star Requiem. Not that you necessarily would want to Star Requiem a uh, Bufalon, but going to protect it from Lost Mine too. And yeah, wow, Bufalon coming in with that Lost Headbutt, getting rid of another energy. And there's already, as we mentioned, there's a lot of energy in uh, Isaiah's Lost Zone already. Yeah, it does also have some more dig, can just play Poke Gear 3.0, see some more cards, find some more of these supporter cards. There looks like is a penny in the hand. Uh, so Alessandro's just not going to take the penny, doesn't want to maybe put more of those cards in the hand. There's always the possibility your opponent plays something like Iono and puts more of those cards at the bottom of the deck. So Alessandro just doesn't want that penny at the moment, more than happy with the hand. And now the question is, do you put something like this Hero's Cape onto the Bufalant and will be the choice, so Bufalant now a 230 HP basic Pokemon that can Lost Zone energies attached to Isaiah's active Pokemon. Yeah, it's a, this is a really scary position for Isaiah to be in right now, recognizing that there's this threat that can just get rid of the remaining energies that Isaiah has. So really, the thing for Isaiah here is going to be to right, race as fast as possible to take these last four prizes before Alessandro can play all of like the, the disruption supporters and to take all these two prizes off the board to deny Isaiah that prize map. Could see a Thornton later on. It will be the choice from Alessandro off the pal pad, shuffling in those two supporter cards into the deck. And Alessandro is going to put the third Psychic Energy into the Lost Zone. There are five in Isaiah's deck, so Isaiah now has to be very careful anytime he attacks with the Psychic Energy because if Alessandro can pull another Thornton playoff where he attaches to a Pokemon on the bench that is a basic, doesn't have it get knocked out via boss's orders, and then uses Thornton to transform or just puts the Bufalon in play, he can start to put Isaiah in a position where he is going to run out of attacks and then start looping possible resources. Yeah, so I think the way you had to go for this if you're Isaiah, you had this Giratina V-Star here. You're one loss zone away from being able to use Star Requiem. I think it has to be, I think it's this simple. I think you Star Requiem, you have one of your two Pidgeots, and then you finish off the Rotom. Or, you know, you maybe KO two Pidgeots because ultimately Alessandro needs to keep two Pidgeots, in, at least one Pidgeot in play to be able to search for things. If you take it off the board, you find yourself in a really awkward position in terms of being able to search for things later on. So there is... As much as Alessandro can try and deny the prize as much as possible, there is still a viable four prize map for Isaiah to take here, but he needs to get it very, very fast. But this is the problem with Bufalon, right? Is if you ignore this Bufalon and try and attack other Pokemon, Bufalon's just going to loss another Psychic Energy, and there's only two left for Isaiah in the deck. So you use that first one to take a knockout with Star Requiem, and then what happens for, if you get Iono? You're put down to a two-card hand. Now you only have one Psychic Energy, your Giratina V-Star stuck in the active, and if it doesn't move, that Grass Energy also gets lost. So it seems like a tough yeah. situation either way, and this Bufalon just not only as a disruptive threat, but also sort of as the priority number one potentially here for Isaiah, because if you do not deal with this Bufalon, it could put you in a situation where you end up running out of the energy you need to close the game out. Yeah, when I mean, you combine it with a Disruption Support, it does get a little bit tougher, because, I mean, they're essentially... There are two knockouts that you can take here. You can take your knockout with a net, you can take it with Giratina, but yeah, exactly like you said, when you're dealing with this Bufalon that can just you know, get rid of all your energy and you're trying to gust around it to win more quickly, you could fall into that trap, and I'm sure that's exactly what Isaiah is weighing up in his head right now. So maybe he just has to deal with the Bufalon as it is. So you can sealed cards, discard a psychic energy, and now Isaiah is in the tank a little bit, maybe thinking about what Pokemon to use. We'll see one of those switch get played, so uh, that is the last switch available. Actually, there is one more, so... We'll see one more switch potentially later on in the game, and an easy choice off flower selecting Manaphy going to the Lost Zone. Yeah, not going to be relevant at all in this matchup. Oh, a big find there. Just find the Mirage Gate off of that uh, flower selecting there. Does need to find a Super Rod, I believe, because there's so many energy in the hand right now. That's the problem. So, you know, they are kind of safe in the hand somewhat, but you need energy in the deck to Mirage Gate. So, yeah, there it is. Super Rod going to put it down, put back that Psychic, and uh, I guess did put back the grass as well? Yeah, of course. Just yeah. trying to get as much value as possible. I'm sure Isaiah would have loved to put one more energy into the deck, but two will be more than fine, but that is also Isaiah's last Super Rod, I believe, because of that one getting discarded earlier on with Aerie, so no more energy coming back, and it's just going to be a pass back okay. over to Alessandro, so 
pretty much just being given a bonus turn and does have that Iono in hand. This could be a good time to play it since Isaiah has spent so much time building this hand up. Yeah, I guess so. And uh, not allowed to take the KO there because I think Isaiah, what we want to do here is to try and piece together as many pieces as possible to take, uh, you know, two boss knockouts in a row so that maybe, yeah, Busan can get rid of one energy, but then on the follow in turn, you can just uh, set up the knockout uh, twice uh, twice on the bounce and win that way. But it's very, very tricky because Alessandro is probably going to play an, an Iono here. And, uh, you know, you don't have much draw if you're on Isaiah's side. There's a, what, a, a, there's a Radiant Greninja, there's one company in the active, which the Busan can just KO anyway. So one more quick search ability being used, and now the Luxray is coming down into play. Hold on, is there now time for a Fang Snipe to maybe get rid of some resources? I'm sure with how there have been no Mirage Gate played so far, Alessandro might have a hunch that Isaiah is holding on to those Mirage Gates to use at a proper time. Yeah, gotta, gotta be thinking that. I mean, that's the benefit of this Fang Snipe attack, of course. You can hold all the resources you want in hand, but time and time again, you can just Fang Snipe and you know, slowly but surely whiz away your opponent's resources until you're left with nothing. And uh, there's going to be with, like the penny yet to be able to pick up that boost line and all the energy so you can reattach that double turbo. And yeah, we're going to see, or maybe even a reattaching of the Hero's Cape as well. We'll put that Luxury onto 310 HP. Yeah, we'll put it out of lost impact range, but would still fall to Star Requiem. And I think Alessandro may just want to Hold that resource for later on. I think you're okay if your opponent is just going to use something like Lost Impact to get rid of more energy. And there it is, the Fang Snipe. Isaiah has a copy of that Mirage Gate as well as Colrus's Experiment. And Alessandro deciding to potentially get rid of the Colrus instead to just limit Isaiah with the resources that he has at the moment. And this makes sense if you're going for a late game Iono, right? You want to give your opponent as little outs as possible to draw out of a low hand Iono. And Colrus is one of the best ways to do that. So just get rid of it now. That way you just don't have to worry about it. So we'll see Colrus hit the discard pile. Alessandro, come on, you know where that goes. Throw it in the trash, <laughs> throw it in the discard pile. As Isaiah will be able to, for the time being, keep the Mirage Gate in hand. But if Isaiah doesn't do anything, then that's sort of next up on Alessandro's list to get rid of it and discard it. Yeah, so now, again, you're kind of in a similar situation to earlier where you have to play the Super Rod at an unoptimal time. Maybe now you have to play the Mirage Gate at an unoptimal time because if you don't, then it's just going to get discarded anyway. So maybe uh, you, know, you load it as Bonetto, you load it as Giratina, and you just decide, you know what, I know that I'm going to potentially lose more energy, but I just need to attack at this point. Things are getting a little bit awkward here for Isaiah. Still has plenty of energy available. It's not out of attacking options, of course. That Bennett is still there. Like you said, Freya, we'll just play the Mirage Gate as it is. But there is only two energy cards left. So many in the Lost Zone. And with both Mirage Gate, or rather with both Super Rod gone, there's just the two energy in the deck. And I believe the two or three available in the hand. It's... Isaiah really is going to have to think about where these energies go and then what the contingency plan is if for some reason that they are removed. So it's currently four in the hand, actually. It's two Psychic and two Grass. It's oh, actually wow. a lot. And so, actually, in a roundabout way, this could be the small benefit of like trying to bait an Iono from Alessandro because that would then put the energy back in the deck. And if I can find one of the many remaining Mirage Gates that he has, could mount an attack after, even after an Iono. This could be an opportunity where Isaiah may actually have to use Star Requiem on this turn just because Lost Impact is such a costly attack to use at this point. So we'll see Flower Selecting. Does Isaiah maybe find something like a switching card to maybe save a resource from this Comfey? A Jet Energy could be great to put this Garatine in the active and have that energy for later on to attack. I believe there is still one more switch left in the deck. So we'll see Garatina get sent to Lost Zone. And it is that oh. Jet Energy as the choice. So we'll see if that is... What Isaiah wants to go for this turn, you can see both options. Now, if Isaiah does have that many energy in hand, the two prize map is sort of there like it was last game. You knock out this Luxray, and then one of these Pokemon on the bench will fall to a Star Requiem or a Lost Impact. Let's see what Isaiah decides to do. Okay, just going to go for the Star Requiem now. And I like this a lot because you're not really worried about Bufflon as much. There's not enough energy on the board to pull off a fort and play. So do you know these energies are pretty safe. And so next turn, all you need is another energy and a gusting option to bring up a two-prizer, and you win the game, you win the match, and you're in the finals. Alessandro does still have some solid cards in hand. We could see potentially the Buffalon reestablished or this Radiant Charizard and that 30 damage from oh. the Buffalon coming in so clutch at this point because it's going to set this Garatina V-Star to be knocked out. And now Isaiah is going to potentially lose the two energy that are on this Garatina and only have enough for one more attack 
on one of this Pokemon, the Banat EX or that Garatina V Star, if it can get evolved. Yeah. And anyway, well, as I can just take note of, uh, actually, we are, just before shuffling the cards to the bottom of I know, going to take a note to know what is actually going to be at the bottom here, just uh, to, thinking long and hard. There's a lot of cards going to the bottom here, but it also means that there's going to be two cards drawn from the top. And we know that there's a few Mirage Gates left in the deck. So depending on how this goes here, this could end up working out for Isaiah. Even though it's only two going to the hand, these two cards could be very, very impactful. Let's see what does Isaiah draw. He's not showing us just yet. No, but Alessandro did find that fire energy, which okay. I'm sure he would have quick searched for if it was not found off of the six cards from Iono. So at the end of this, we'll get a bonus card to look for. And Alessandro with another important choice here. What do you find off this Poke Gear? Do you want the penny to maybe pick up this Radiant Charizard if it is not knocked out the following turn? Or something like Boss's Orders that could allow you to be maybe a little bit more aggressive into some of these Pokemon Isaiah may be trying to power up later on. Yeah, but it looks like is going to go for that penny, just try and, you know, establish the prize denial route, knowing that that Rotom is uh, very, very vulnerable to a decent knockout, even just from, like, a Poltergeist, for example. Even with Alessandro's lower hand size after this Iono, still perhaps, actually, it's going to be interesting. How many trainers are oh, in Alessandro's hand right now? There's a lot, for sure. As it stands, though, right now, Radiant Chars are just being a one-prize Pokemon. doesn't matter how big that Poltergeist is. I mean, you've got the Hero's Cape on you, so you're going to be uh, it's gonna take a little bit more to take a knockout. You're going to have to discard five, or you're going to have to have five trainer cards, but I'm sure Alessandro has that quota. That's not a lot yeah, to ask for. It is, but again, if it's like I can find Mirage Gate plus a boss's orders to bring up the Rotom and then just go for the Poltergeist, this could be the opening to do the 2 2 knockout prize map to win. So here it is Combustion Blaster gets, gets played, and what's it's like, it's, oh, it's an artisan, and is that a Bonnet? It is a Banette. That Banette could find a supporter card from the discard pile, something like that Chorus's Experiment. Oh, there's a Mirage also Gate! A Mirage Gate as well, but I don't think there's a way to pivot this Comfey out of the active. And this is where Isaiah, taking note of those cards put to the bottom of the deck with that Iona, are so important. He is thinking through what is the best way to maximize me hitting outs here? Is it to use Flower Selecting first? He believes it is. And it is a boss's orders. Finds the boss's orders here. No way. So with this Mirage Gate, is unfortunately just one piece short. Does not have a way to retreat this Comfey out and use something like the Poltergeist because it does require two energy to attack. And it's just going to pass the turn over to Alessandro. How will he use this extra turn that's been given to him? So I guess what you do is use the Penny to pick up the Rotom. Maybe you can... Even, oh, actually, yeah, because we got the Charizard, okay, no, this makes sense, that way you can reset it, and uh, you can then use the Combustion Blast again. Do you, does Alessandro have a way to bring up this Banet and KO it, maybe? You did have Defiance Band in hand, I wonder, that if you could have maybe grabbed something like Counter, like the Counter Catcher here, you could have gone after Banet EX, but maybe Alessandro can put himself in a spot where he plays down enough item cards for him to be in an okay spot. This is a super interesting choice, I feel like, with how things are, the Banet is the easiest Pokemon to power up because Isaiah used that Starbirth, or rather not that Starbirth, that, of course, Star Requiem attack on the Garatina V-Star. Let's see what Alessandro decides to go after here. So yeah, Counter Catcher, uh, with the Hero Escape on, you cannot KO the Banet EX, or, or, well, you get you the Garatina V, that will be enough, but Banet EX is 260 HP, it's 10 short. Yeah, and this is a position where I think it's so worth it to just take the Banet out if you had that Defiance ban, but instead attach the hero's cape so we'll be just 10 damage short oh no it has 250 oh, oh, excuse me oh, okay never mind never mind <laughs> oh does it not does it have 200 oh it does have 250 uh, yeah okay. so it is exactly enough i thought okay. he had a little bit more health yeah, yeah and now isaiah just not having that one piece was one small thing away just needed a pivoting option we'll see the mirage gate get played now isaiah's got to figure something out because this radiant charizard just took Four prizes back to back. So, is there a Giratina V star left in the deck? I'm actually. Yeah, there, yeah, there is. is. Yeah. Okay. So now it's a similar situation, but you just need to find another piece. You need to find the Jet Energy and you need to find the Giratina V star. We know that the boss's orders is already in hand, so you can find the Jet and you can find the Giratina V star. You will win this game and you will move on to the finals. But it's now just an extra thing to go for, and it's going to be so so hard. Yeah, of course. Combustion Blast makes it so that you can't attack the following turn. If Alessandro can maybe put together a penny and another one of those counter catcher, we could be seeing a completely different game. Flower selecting will be used. Sableye going to the Lost Zone and keeping another Comfey. Is this maybe a turn for Isaiah where you have to use that Banette to find that Garatina V-Star and then play the boss's orders on the following turn? But it's so risky because if you're going to build your hand up, 
Alessandro can just find one of those Iono and disrupt your hand if it hasn't been played already. I guess so, but even so, it still works out in your favor, right? Because you do course of experiment, it's two to the, it's three to the hand, but then it's two to the lost zone, which are not useful. So it's kind of, it's digging, but it's also deck thinning. So maybe that is still just the best option to go for here. And uh, yeah, I think he recognizes that he's going to go for the ability. And we're, we're going to see Chorus Experiment, uh, just a little bit of an extra dig. And we know that the pieces are there in hand for next turn, but will it be enough? Really looking for that Jet Energy and that Giratina V-Star. Does find the Jet Energy, but does not find Giratina V-Star just yet. But that is the advantage of putting another Comfey in play. It means that next turn you can just dig a little bit deeper. And I mean, Isaiah's got to be thinking, you're definitely in a little bit of a better spot, I guess, if you find something like the Giratina V-Star, because it would force Alessandro to have a Defiance Band to knock you out. And Isaiah is even considering just using this Jet Energy to look at two more cards off Flower Selecting. Do we see the Giratina? No. We don't, but there is Temple of Sinnoh. Oh. That could potentially slow things down, but with that Star Requiem being used, it's not going to be too, too impactful at this point. No, but there's another Comfey, though, so it's going to be Retreat, and I really like this because you are just... Every, every single flower selection that Isaiah does reduces the impact of Iono. It's extra dig, it's finding the Giratina V-Star, it's getting cards out of the deck, and was that the Giratina V-Star there after the last flower selecting? It yes, was. it was! The Giratina V-Star found, so Alessandro at this point, just one more piece that he's going to need, so Isaiah just trying to protect this final Pokémon with as much as possible. And look at that, the Lost Zone built up over 20 <laughs> cards in the Lost Zone. There have been so many flower that's, selecting, so many Colrus played at this point, it feels like. That's got to be like. a record, right? <laughs> I'm sure somebody's built up more, Freya, but you know what? <laughs> we'll count it for now. We've got to lock in, though, because Alessandro is in a position where this game is completely winnable. There's two cards left. Oh, hold oh, wait, on, with two wait. cards left in deck, there's a Chiyu. If there's a Penny in the hand, Alessandro can mill Isaiah a miss there. Didn't see the Chiyu as an option, and the Chiyu comes in, Jealousy Singe, mills Isaiah, of all the cards in deck, and we are going to a game three here in top four. We were talking about how fitting and you know, going for the deck is so good, but you're just a little bit too far. Had the opening there to take the win with the Chiyu and the Jalousy Singe, and we'll be moving on to game three. Yeah, it's just one of those risks. <laughs> I have to ask myself, if you're Isaiah, is it really worth digging that far to find that Giratina V-Star? If it wasn't necessarily a necessity, you know your opponent has Defiance Band. If they want to attack with Charizard, they're going to have to petty pick it up. They could reattach a different tool, and that's just one of those moments where it's so hard to see everything sometimes against Control because there's so many different attacks they could use. I mean, Chiyu was used early on, but <laughs> it came back around towards the end and finished off the deck there for Isaiah. Yeah, wow, a phenomenal play there from Alessandro, but now here's going to be crunch time, right? And this is where Alessandro is going to have a little bit of a struggle because... We have eight minutes left on the clock. We know that Alessandro can take prizes, but we also know that it's a much harder for him to do so compared to Isaiah. So if Isaiah can just take an early lead and take an early prize lead in time, Isaiah will be favored. But I'm sure Alessandro had that in mind. He'll do his best to play this game free. In the meantime, let's take a quick look back at that game too. Yeah, Buffalon there, such a cool attack to see the Image set up for that Radiant Charizard knockout, and here he was, the star of the show, making her grand entrance, kind of getting rid of that Prime Catcher that has been a super powerful piece for Isaiah, but in Games 1 and Game 2, we never really got to use it to full effect. Yeah, no, it never did. It's just a really, uh, really unfortunate there, but wow. I, you know, we, we said that this is going to be an absolutely, you know, amazing match between two of the best in the world, but I think it, this match seemed to live beyond my expectations, honestly, but I have thoroughly enjoyed this. <laughs> We're at under 10 minutes left. We are getting into a third game, and Isaiah will get a few cards here from the Mulligans, but this is, again, what I said at the beginning of the round. Yeah. Why Control can struggle to win these big tournaments because even though you get more time in top cut, sometimes that can work to your disadvantage or your advantage. In this case, Alessandro's deck is not meant to take the lead. It does not have more efficient attackers than Giratina V-Star, and if Isaiah has information of the clock like I know he does, he could maybe make a little bit of a different game plan where he just goes ahead and then just plays conservative to hold that prize lead and put himself into a position to advance to the finals tomorrow. Yeah, and I'm sure both players will be very much having the clock in mind as they go into this game free. And unhelpfully for Alessandro, we just do see here on our other screen, there are a couple of mulligans going on. So uh, this is the last thing that Alessandro needs right now. Yeah, not only are you giving your opponent more cards, but you're also burning more time off the clock. And time is not your friend in this situation. 
situation. You need to try and win this game as fast as possible. Once this game goes to time, Alessandro is put at a steep disadvantage unless he can pull off some sort of miracle attacks back to back. We could see the Pidgeotti X movie get in there, start going flower hunting, maybe taking down some of these Comfey, but I mean, that's an ask for sure. Yeah, it really is, but maybe it is just what he has to go for. This is what the best players in the world do. They recognize how the situation changed depending on what deck they're up against, how far they are in the match, and yeah, maybe Alessandro recognized that and just, uh, you know, it's going to be uh, birds picking flowers, like you said. <laughs> Looks like Alessandro finally does have a basic Pokemon, and there are just six minutes left on the clock. Things are looking very good in terms of time for Isaiah, but we have seen tons of crazy swings in games throughout this weekend. Do not count Alessandro out of it yet. There is that Rotom V in the prize cards, oh. and two Mirage Gate again in the prizes for Isaiah. As well as two Comfy, actually. So yeah, that's a really, really brutal... Uh, not really the start that you want, but I mean, with this little time left on the clock, yeah, it, let's just see how to go. So starting off with, uh, as I going first, having that nest ball, so uh, is able to, you know, get out maybe at least uh, one Giratina down and uh, yeah, going to do his price search as quick as he can, given how much time is left. Yeah, wants to just make sure he knows all the pieces just because it's a game three doesn't mean it's not worth making sure everything is available, and Isaiah is more than happy to let this game play out as quickly as possible towards time, because he wants to take an early prize lead and can do that in several ways, maybe unconventional to how he would normally play this matchup out. Yeah, but, uh, you know, d d time is of the essence here, and uh, you've got to play around that as you, as you can, so... It's going to be interesting to see what he finds off the Nest Ball, I guess. It would make sense probably just to go for the Giratina here. We saw, you know, early on in you know, games one and two, just uh, get, using those Abyss Seekings to build up a hand, ended up working out really great for him. And uh, the early, you can get that down. Maybe you just attach some energies manually and you know, maybe just go for an early shred to start taking some prizes. Yeah, you can also not put Comfey into play and leave your opponent without any easy Pokemon to knock out. Those Comfey only have 70 HP. So if you maybe put just the Bonnet EX into play and the Giratina, this Pidgeot EX deck really can't do much. I mean, it can get in there and swing with Pidgeot, but eventually you can build up enough cards to, out of nowhere, bench a bunch of Comfey, use those flower selectings, and hit with Lost Impact. Do you then maybe have to go double turbo, double turbo fire on a Radiant Charizard and start swinging for like 210? Uh, <laughs> do not get me started with that. That is a lot of energy to find, and Isaiah does play cards like Prime Catcher to capitalize on aggressive turns with something like versus experiment and Alessandro is going to get the bad news here on this first deck search that that Rotom V is in the prize cards instant charge such a powerful ability on this first turn and this would have been a great way to get Rotom down because there's also a forest seal stone in the hand oh, and that is goodness. the only V Pokemon besides Luxray V that can use that V star power in Alessandro's deck so maybe in this instance you just have to bench the Luxray here there is um yeah one that's ball is going to grab that Pidgey of course very important to find that but yeah Maybe if you want to make use of the Forest Seal Stone, just grab the Luxray now. You know you're probably going to attack with it anyway. So, you know, you put it down just to make use of the Forest Seal Stone. Yeah, makes a lot of sense to me. Not exactly what you want. I mean, there are still a lot of great cards in this hand. We've got the Arvin that can find the Hisuian Heavy Ball. So things aren't too terrible. Alessandro can still get that piece out, as well as even that Hero's Cape or one of these tool cards, something like the Bravery Charm. But it's actually going to be the Defiance Band because Alessandro knows what the clock his best approach in this situation is not to necessarily control Isaiah's board, but to eventually, when he's behind in a prize or two, hit back with a big Defiance Band attack. Yeah, Alessandro, very much signaling aggression here, and very, very right to do so. So I imagine he's going to find this Rotom V off of the Hisuian Heavy Ball, slap that down, and then announce instant charge, draw free cards, and uh, want to be trying to go as fast as possible to make sure that he can have a chance at winning in this very, very shortly running out clock in Game 3. It is coming down to it. We're at just under three minutes left in this match. Alessandro, I mean, if you're in this position, you got to play quickly. You have to have a little bit of an idea that time is winding down. We can't sit here, unfortunately, and play Pokemon forever. <laughs> this match has got to come to an end at some point. Yeah, yeah. We, we, all the other games have finished at this point. There's just the TCG left to go. So the, these really are the last few minutes of today's uh, proceedings at the International Championships. It's uh, Alessandro against uh, Isaiah. It's game free. It's instant charge. It's Isaiah's turn. Isaiah does have a Colrus experiment, and this could be the first opportunity for Banat EX to really provide a lot of value using that attack, Everlasting Darkness, shutting off Rare Candy and making it so that Alessandro cannot evolve into Pidgeot EX while also slowly building a board up, slowly building a hand up for himself.
Yeah, it looks like there was no energy found uh, off of uh, this uh, course experiment, so maybe you could have gone for aggressive pulse guys otherwise, but no, it looks like in this instance, uh, it does find the Ultra Ball though, so that's a very good find. Oh, actually, had the Banette EX ready in hand, never mind. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, has yeah. the Banette, and yeah, we're just gonna see the Everlasting Darkness. 30 damage to this Noibat, preventing Alessandro from playing any item cards the following turn. And now Rare Candy and Pidgeot are no longer a combination of cards that Alessandro can get into play. We're going to start to see this deck really struggle without Pidgeot EX as an option right now. Yeah, and this might almost be, not quite a you know, checkmate is a little bit harsh, but you know, it is a very, very strong move from Isaiah because you really deny Alessandro any means of setting him properly. There is the Penny to pick up the Noibat, not going to be much good in this matchup with all these evolution attackers. And it looks like it's just going to send up that Mimic. You. Yeah, pretty much saying, look, if you want to item lock me every turn, you're going to do it without damaging any of my Pokemon. And eventually, I'm just going to build up a big enough hand so that when you do decide to give me items back, I can maybe put something together, especially when you're also using that Rotom V instant charge every turn to end your turn off. And is that, was that just a, uh, <laughs> I think that was just like draw, announce, announce the Everlasting yeah. Darkness and pass. Just going to use that Everlasting Darkness again. And Alessandro is just going to take more time here to build the hand up with powerful resources. Arvin can find an item card that can't be played and a tool card. Frey, let's not forget, tool cards are no longer items after the Scarlet and Violet sets have released. Yeah, that is uh, now a, uh, sorry, I didn't quite get that right there. You see, there's a little bit of purple text there. It used to be it used to be blue, but now it is purple. The tools are now their own definition. You can now play Pokemon tool cards underneath item lock, so it makes them a little bit more powerful in that regard, especially in a situation like this. And with how things are looking, this will be super important to see who is turn zero right now. It's going to go ahead and pass things back over to Isaiah. And with Isaiah drawing a card, if his turn does not end within a few seconds, we're just going to see Everlasting Darkness. And now Alessandro drawing a card here. It looks like if Alessandro does not finish this turn off, he will be turn zero with time being called. This is going to be intense. We have now gotten into our plus three turns. Three turns are left, it seems. Hopefully we'll get confirmation that time is called. Who is our turn zero? So the way it works is it goes back and forth between the two players. Whoever's turn it was, when time was called, is turn zero. It then goes back and forth. The other player is turn one. Then that player who was turn zero is turn two. And then the other player is turn three. And Alessandro is turn zero. So Alessandro will get this turn plus one more turn to finish out the game. And Isaiah is going to get the next two turns to see what he can do. But we're sort of in this weird checkmate stalemate right now where Banet is attacking. But don't forget, Banet also has that poltergeist attack. And that is really what he's eyeing up. And it honestly combos so well with Everlasting Darkness because yeah. you prevent your opponent from playing those items. You could cut the tension right now with a knife. Alessandro is, you know, now that he, he recognizes that time is over, he's taking a very, very careful look at his hand to see what he can do. Can play some of those tool cards, maybe. Cannot play any of those items. As you mentioned, the Everlasting Darkness coming in. It may be thinking about going for that star alchemy. Of course, uh, that tool is already attached and we'll be able to. Oh, is it? Did no, you know something? No, it's even? all good. So I also want to just confirm the way that rules work in Top Cut is after three turns have been finished for time, players. Who have, if a player has less prize cards remaining than the opponent, that player will be the winner. And if the players are tied on prize cards, they continue playing until a player has taken a prize card. These are going to be the rules to remember as we potentially go into that situation once these three turns maybe expire. Yeah, so basically, I, I don't think this, I think this is how it's going to play out. Just based on, you know, how the back and forth has gone, I think we're going to see these three turns pass maybe back here, and then it will be next prize wins. Not quite yet. We still have a few turns time to get there, but uh, Alessandro, with that in mind, has uh, gone for that double turbo energy with the forest seal stone uh, with the star alchemy. Does, does he have a way to retreat this Mimikyu, though? I'm not sure. No, just going to have to go for the instant charge. Okay, so now we're into turn one of time. I think the big card here for Isaiah is, does he have a boss's orders or a prime catcher? I see a little bit of pink in that hand. I think Isaiah may be holding onto this prime catcher, but there's no energy. a little bit of a bluff game. And yes, there's no energy in this hand. We may have to see Isaiah start to play some of these switch to use flower selecting and maybe try and find those resources to put together a prime catcher on his final turn of the game. Wow, this is... Like, 
I'm, this is one of the situations where you're like a little bit lost for words, right? There is so, it is absolutely at the edge, uh, on the edge of a knife. There is so much that could just, or so little that could make the difference between who wins and who loses. Nesbo was going to find this Comfey. What does this guy have to work with? We saw, yeah, the Prime Catcher was in the hand, but could you just try to find the energy? And then if you find the energy, do you just maybe go for a risky KO on this Rotom V or, or on the Luxray even? I think Isaiah's plan Wait, here is oh. to continue to use Everlasting Darkness Wait. maybe until a Pokemon is knocked out. But no, we're Wait. just going to see the Prime Catcher. I was wrong. There's a Jet Energy in it. Isaiah's hand. Oh, wow. If Isaiah has a Jet Energy, this is a big time play. In terms of time, Isaiah can bring up this Luxray. Knows there are more than four trader cards in Alessandro's hand. And with a Poltergeist here, Alessandro will only have one more turn during this game. And that means if he cannot take a knockout, Isaiah will win. And even if he does, Isaiah will have another turn to take one more knockout to win this game. With this, Isaiah might have just sealed his place in, in the championship Sunday. So yeah, here we go. Jet Energy brings the Burnett into the active. Is uh, Isaiah going to play anything else? I mean, there's plenty I more think in it's the just hand. potentially thinking about just thinning out any cards that he will not need in this situation. Just playing Ultra Ball, discarding those pieces, and all also finds the Banette for the following turn to maybe use one more, and that's it. That's it. Isaiah has the pieces that are needed. He wins this top four match, and he will be going to another international championship final, fighting to finally win it all. Isaiah popping off in there, deservedly so. He's over the moon with that win, and you see the crowd supporters with him as well. Wow, what a phenomenal top four game. This is going to be an insane finals tomorrow. Isaiah Bradner up against Tord Reklev. You are not going to want to miss it. Yeah, no, it's a, the championship Sunday, and it's a great should have these players, both players hugging out at the end. You love to see that, especially after such a tense game. Whew.